if we make contact with them, I think in this century, we'll probably pick up signals, signals from an extraterrestrial civilization. When Oumuamua came close to Earth in 2017, many people believed the pancake-looking celestial body was an alien spaceship sent to spy on us. This theory, however, was shot down fast and branded a conspiracy by many scientists. But now, this same space object is coming back to Earth and it has everyone talking and wondering if this is really an alien intergalactic spaceship. And this includes highly rated scientists like Dr. Michio Kaku. What is Oumuamua? Who is Michio Kaku? And why is an alien spaceship coming back to Earth just six years after its last trip? Join us in this video as we look into Michio Kaku's view about how Oumuamua has just returned and the weird thing that is happening. We humans live in a vast universe, bigger than anything you can ever imagine. Flung trillions of miles in every direction and without any definite ending is the extent of what we know as the universe. As much as curiosity runs in our veins, we still only have been able to crack a minute portion of what we can, which is also a minute portion of what we know exists and probably the minutest portion of what really exists. You do get the idea now. Whatever we know about our universe is nearly non-existent. Now within this intricate tapestry of the universe is our solar system. The solar system is a system of arrangements and order where certain planetary and celestial bodies move and coordinate their activities relative to a single star called the Sun. Our solar system is an amazing collection of the Sun, planets, moons, comets, asteroids, and other celestial bodies that are interconnected in a weird gravitational dance routine. Central to our solar system is that ball of fire that you wake up to every morning unless it's winter where you are or you wake earlier than the sun rises. The sun is a gigantic seething ball of hot gas that illuminates our world and supplies heat and warmth to our other sister planets that orbit around it. The sun's gravitational force and pull are what keep everything within the solar system in perfect harmony and coordination. Next in order within this solar system are massive bodies called planets. One of the YECIH is our home, Earth. Other planets include Mercury, the one planet that is so heated nothing can survive there, Venus with its thick and choking atmosphere, and Mars where Elon Musk is gearing up to relocate humans. Then you have the outer planets, Jupiter, that massive and gigantic gas bubble with storms bigger than whole countries and continents and Saturn with its beautiful rings. Then there's Uranus and Neptune, our solar system's ice queens, beautiful, dramatic and enigmatic. Pluto, despite its five moons, got demoted from this list many years ago. However, not only Pluto has moons. Dancing with the planets around the Sun are their moons, each with its own uniqueness. One of the most exciting of these, apart from ours, that scientists look to harvest resources from is Europa, one of Jupiter's moons. Over the years, it has teased scientists with the possibility of subsurface oceans and the potential for extraterrestrial life. Then, there are asteroids and comets, the remains of the raw material from which our solar system was born. These objects course through our solar system like nomads, occasionally coming close for a friendly wave. Together, these form an interlocked and intricate system of celestial bodies, although they are as much independent as they are interdependent. They follow a certain mathematical and physical exactness that astounds scientists. There is such an exactness that if one of these bodies were to, relative to others in the system, move an inch away, the result would be chaos for every single member of this system. We went through this list to be reminded that, as a race, we still have so much to explore and learn. We are constantly exploring and trying to explain what goes on in our world. This means that when we have a visitor from beyond our solar system, from outer space, it pricks our attention and excitement. Well, in 2017, we had one such visitor. And it did get hearts racing and puzzled. In October 2017, astronomers were startled to find a strange object in our solar system. The reddish object was shaped like a cigar or a pancake, which is different from other celestial bodies we are used to seeing in our system. It was first thought to be an asteroid, but later recast as a likely comet. Some even considered it a possible alien spaceship. Whatever it is, the object's incredible speed and ridiculous trajectory indicated that it didn't originate from our solar system. 
The 600-foot-long object was named Umuamua, a Hawaiian word that means a messenger from afar arriving first, according to NASA. During its brief visit, the rock approached Earth within 15 million miles, 24 million kilometers, about 62 Earth-moon distances, and disappeared a few weeks after its discovery. The foreigner had a weird boomerang-shaped trajectory that astronomers call a hyperbolic orbit. However, it was already on its way out of the solar system and back into the interstellar depths from which it came when we spotted it. From that time on, there's been as many theories about its origin and status as there are many scientists. But what everyone was sure of was that it wasn't from here. To make things worse, two years later, in August 2019, another interstellar object was discovered. Named Borisov, this object, however, looked different from Oumuamua as it looked like a normal comet. This didn't worry scientists, as it pretty much fits into their prediction of what an interstellar object would look like. What made Oumuamua bewildering was that, unlike Borisov, it doesn't have either a coma or a tail. A coma is the gaseous head around a comet's icy nucleus. So, what really is Oumuamua? The simple answer? No one can definitively say what it is. But we might have an idea about that. For many years, astronomers all over the world have been waiting for an interstellar object like Oumuamua or Borisov to come along. According to Thomas Zerbukin, NASA's Associate Administrator for Science when Oumuamua was discovered in 2017, for decades we've theorized that such interstellar objects are out there, and now, for the first time, we have direct evidence they exist. While interstellar objects have been erstwhile predicted, the sighting of Oumuamua was totally unexpected. Apart from its proximity to Earth, in its travels, and how it totally evaded detection until it was on its way out of our solar system's back door, it didn't look like what scientists imagined. First, it is small and unusually shaped. Also, while behaving like a comet, moving as though it was outgassing, it didn't look like one. This has led many top scientists to assume the sublimation of either nitrogen or hydrogen ice. And while conspiracy theories have suggested that Oumuamua was an extraterrestrial or alien spaceship, leading scientists claim there is no evidence for such theories. By definition, interstellar objects are objects that come from other planetary systems and are thrown into interstellar space either by giant collisions that smash protoplanets apart or by the gravitational tides of marauding gas giant planets. Being the first interstellar visitor to have been identified, Oumuamua gives us insight into what other extrasolar planetary systems might be like. Another interesting and noteworthy thing about Oumuamua was its shape. Initial measurements from scientists suggested that the object was shaped like a long cylinder, with a size ratio of 10 to 1, meaning it was 10 times as long as it was wide. However, astronomers later revised these dimensions to approximately 6 ratio 6 ratio 1, which instead describes a pancake shape. This wasn't the first time astronomers would be seeing such a weirdly shaped object. In the past, similarly shaped objects have been seen in the Kuiper Belt beyond Neptune, specifically a minor planet called Arakoth, which NASA's New Horizons spacecraft flew past on New Year's Day 2019. The measurements of Oumuamua's shape and dimensions were based on what astronomers refer to as its light curve. This is a graph that tracks how the object's brightness changed over time as it tumbled through space. Oumuamua appeared brighter when we saw its broader side. Oumuamua was also very small, estimated to be 377 feet long, 364 feet wide, and 62 feet thick with an albedo of 0.1. This means it reflected 10% of the sunlight falling on it, which is fairly standard for a cometary nucleus. So, where did it come from? Nobody knows which star system Oumuamua originated from. However, in 2018, astronomers tracked Oumuamua back along the path from which it first approached the Sun and found that the object passed near four stars, coming closest to the red dwarf star Hip 3,757 a million years ago. Perhaps Oumuamua came from there, or maybe it has been wandering space for much longer. Where planets, asteroids, and comets in our solar system orbit the Sun in closed loops, Oumuamua's trajectory was different. A NASA animation describes how the object's path was hyperbolic, meaning it came hurtling toward the sun fast enough that the sun's gravity could bend Oumuamua's path only slightly rather than capturing it in a looping orbit. This meant that Oumuamua, which was traveling about 16.5 miles per second relative to the sun's motion, 
could just keep on going, heading toward the solar system's exit door. All of these make Oumuamua extremely weird. It is absolutely nothing like anything else in the solar system. Apart from the characteristics of its orbit, which firmly pin it down as the interstellar interloper it truly is, the object is just a strange rock altogether. It has a dull red color to it, reminiscent of the objects found in the distant outskirts of our solar system, like Pluto. Oumuamua should, by all rights, be a comet. After all, distant comets are only loosely attached to their stars and are the best candidates for being ejected, scattering to the four corners of the galaxy. Yet, Oumuamua lacks the clear features of cometary activity. No tail, no outgassing. Even though it acts like a comet, it looks like an asteroid. But the biggest puzzle regarding Oumuamua is that we saw it at all. Just imagine for a second the sheer scale of time and space at work in a galaxy. Stars live and die over the course of millions or billions of years. The formation of any solar system takes hundreds of millions of years. It takes tens of thousands of years for even the fastest moving objects to hop from star to star. In contrast, we've only been searching the heavens with telescopes for about 400 years. That's basically nothing. A thin sliver of time to monitor the cosmos. And it's only within the past few decades, and even a few years, that we've had the technology to spot and track small, dim, fast-moving objects like Oumuamua. So, the fact that we saw Oumuamua at all makes the whole thing weirder. Do solar systems just randomly and commonly eject objects? It's simple. It's either rocks like Oumuamua are very common, or Lady Luck shines on us with our detections. It's more scientific to assume that such ejections are common than to say we got lucky. So, we'd stick with that assumption. Now, if Oumuamua and other celestial globetrotters are commonly ejected from their solar systems, where do they come from? According to astronomers, it is highly improbable that an interstellar celestial globetrotter like Oumuamua can come from a mature, stable system because mature and stable systems are mature and stable. It is a known fact that when a solar system settles down and grows up, it just doesn't eject enough raw material to saturate the galaxy. While there might be the occasionally bad day for the average rock which finds itself on the wrong side of Jupiter and ends up being sent away from home, this doesn't seem to accurately explain the apparent frequency of interstellar objects. Let's recap here. 1. There's an interstellar object that's traveling from one solar system to another. 2. The fact that we've noticed two of such within two years suggests that these ejections are very common in our galaxy unless you want to believe some alien civilization is spying on us. 3. For there to be an ejection, there must be a home from which that object was ejected. That object comes from a solar system. 4. Mature and stable solar systems are highly improbable of these jerky ejections. As noted, they are mature and stable. Now that we're on the same page, let's move forward. The only logical conclusion, then, is that these ejections are from younger solar systems. Young solar systems are known to be madhouses with collisions and mergers and migration and all the rest. And lots of tiny, tiny rocks just hanging out looking around for who's going to kick them out. If this is the case, it raises another question. What in a young, growing solar system is able to kick Oumuamua and friends out, setting the scene for humans to detect them in some other random system billions of years later? From our knowledge of how our solar system works, whatever can kick Oumuamua and its friends out must be a planet that has a lot of mass and has a gravitational effect on other members of the solar system. A planet like Jupiter. If you have a planet like Jupiter in a young solar system, this means that young rocks, depending on their luck, will see mild orbital shifts, be caught in a gravity well to crash into their star, or be kicked out of their neighborhood entirely because of their Jupiter's interactions. The objection to this would be that not every solar system is able to grow a Jupiter-sized planet. And it appears that when they do, a massive planet often gets pulled close to the Sun, becoming what's known as a hot Jupiter. And hot Jupiters, being all snuggled up close to their parent star, aren't interested in ejecting debris anymore. They just don't care anymore. We, however, can have a different story with a planet like Neptune. Although Neptune is not as massive and gigantic as Jupiter, Neptune-type planets like to hang out on the outskirts of a solar system. And this is where our solar system sports the Kuiper Belt, one of the great reservoirs of the comets. For a young solar system in its formative years, it is a given that there would be a lot of interaction between a Neptune-like planet and the rest of the debris way out there. 
However, finding Neptunes in other solar systems has proven to be difficult for astronomers. This is because the methods used by scientists in finding exoplanets have a certain bias. The techniques used are designed to find massive objects closer to their stars. Those are simply the easiest to detect. Neptune-type planets are too far away from their parent stars to make a significant signal for us to capture with our current techniques. This means we're a little in the dark when it comes to just how many Neptunes are out there in the galactic community. This is, however, until recently. A pair of astronomers have used the DS-HARP Disk Substructures at High Angular Resolution project. Survey of Still Forming Systems with the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array ALMA, to investigate the origins of Oumuamua. Many of these protoplanetary disks have visible gaps in them, and computational modeling reveals that the only way those gaps can form is by a growing planet clearing out the disk. What's more, the size of the gap gives us an estimate of the planet's size. In other words, we can't see Neptunes in mature systems, but we can find a bunch of baby Neptunes still in the nursery. And it turns out that Neptunes are relatively common, maybe just common enough to interact with the debris field in those disks and send enough objects like Oumuamua flying out into interstellar space that we would catch one. This is still very much a hypothesis, and the way to test this hypothesis is via further observations. The models produced by the team of astronomers predict the total number of Oumuamua-like objects floating around, which gives us the prediction for how many we ought to see in upcoming surveys. The more we watch the skies, the more interstellar interlopers we are sure to find. And the more we can identify them and characterize them, the more we can start to build a census. And from that census, we can work backward and understand everything, from the population of massive exoplanets around other stars to the formation of solar systems themselves. Our observation of the heavens is set to be given a boost, with the new Vera C. Rubin Observatory planned to come online in 2024. According to Jennifer Bergner, an astrochemist with the University of California, Berkeley, they're predicting maybe one interstellar object a year. This new addition is a big deal for astronomers, as the closest star system to our own is over four light years away, and with current technology, it would take thousands of years to send a probe there. Karen Meech, a scientist at the Institute for Astronomy at the University of Hawaii, who leads the team that initially found and observed Oumuamua, notes that some researchers have already designed missions to intercept one of these interstellar travelers. This could contain clues about the composition of the star systems that formed them. According to her, I think what's important about this is to get all these creative ideas out there. If we ever get to have a mission to one of these objects, we now have a wealth of testable ideas. The latest news is that Oumuamua is orbiting back to Earth. While there is no official reporting from leading astronomers, observatories, and NASA, this news has become fuel for conspiracy theorists who believe that Oumuamua is an alien spaceship. If it is true that Oumuamua is actually returning to Earth, then it would be harder to explain scientifically how an interstellar object is ejected into our solar system, comes close to Earth undetected, leaves barely detected, and comes back six years later. That would change everything. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.